Hi everyone, I'm Karina Gantus from Narrations by KK. I'm going to be reading a small excerpt from Karen J. Mossman's novel, Play the Game. I tried not to mingle or get involved with the team much. One of their biggest conversations were about nights out, where they were going, how much they had to drink. If only they could hear themselves, nothing to be proud of, yet they talked as if getting legless was the basis of a good night. The girls talked constantly of the different nightclubs they'd been to and who they copped off with. They were loud and giggly and boasted about their conquests. The girls enjoyed telling me what I was missing. I ignored them as they tried to get a reaction from me. Now I had Kelly to fill in my every moment. I counted the hours until I saw him again. I knew his business took him away a lot. He didn't elaborate on it. It made me wonder exactly what he did, as sometimes it took him out of the country. I was staring at my phone at his picture, enjoying his smile, when a voice from behind me said, Who are you making googly eyes at? It was Moria, one of the girls I didn't like. Nobody. I turned to put my phone away, but she grabbed it from my hand. Give it back, I yelled. It's my boyfriend. Moria laughed aloud and showed it to the others. Some were on calls but still looked over and grinned. <laughs> Sang Moria, Stella lives in La La Land, I always knew it. Tracy, who was sitting next to her, cried, Kelly Ambrose, Stella aims high, as if. Give it to me, I said again, stretching my headphone wire as I moved towards the desk. How do you know him? Moira and Tracy burst into more laughter. Oh my God, she doesn't even know who he is. What are you talking about? I asked, this time snatching it back and putting it in my pocket. By then, Graham had finished his call. Kelly Ambrose, as if someone like that would go for our Stella. I was totally confused. What were they talking about? Just then there was a whisper in my ear and I took my seat, flicked my screen to the claims form. Luckily it was a straightforward reporting of an accident, no damage and I quickly finished. By then Moria was also taking a call. I switched off my phone and went to the toilets, feeling upset. Generally I ignored them. Sitting on a bench next to the cubicles, I tapped Kelly's name into Google. Kelly Ambrose is an English professional footballer who plays as an attacking midfielder or as a winger for the Premier League club Manchester United and the English national team. My heart plummeted. Kelly. My Kelly was famous. How had I not realised? I now recalled when the World Cup was on last year, which I made a point of tuning out. The company had put up big screens, even on mute. Most people watched it as they took calls. Good for morale, they said. I heard Graham and Neil talking about him. It hadn't clicked. Now I recalled how Kelly had not been forthcoming about what he did for a job. And suddenly the pieces fitted together. I felt cheated. I didn't want to be a footballer's girlfriend. Annoyed as tears welled up. I dialed Kelly's number. I hoped he wouldn't answer because I didn't want to cry while talking to him, but he picked up. Stella! He sounded pleased to hear from me, which made it worse. I paused, swallowed, and pulled myself together. Hearing his voice made me quiver. Stella, what's wrong? I know who you are. It was his turn to go quiet. I don't want a relationship with a footballer, I told him. I'm already the laughing stock. I heard him draw his breath. Don't say that. Look, I'm sorry. I was afraid to tell you. I sort of hoped you knew. It's not a bad thing, you know. For you, maybe, I said, staring ahead at the hand dryers and hoping no one came in. I'm still me. My job doesn't define who I am. I was always a person before becoming professional. And what do you mean laughing stock? I told him what happened. 
Oh God, I'm sorry, babe. I put up with worse. It's just, I'm not sure it will work between us. What do you mean? It already is. I really like you, Stella. I don't want to lose you. I didn't know what to say to that. The truth was I didn't want to lose him either. I was just scared of what it all meant. Look, he said, let me pick you up from work and show you something. Then you can decide whether I'm worth keeping. Don't say it like that, I said, trying to protest. I want to show you I'm normal. Oh, Kelly, I sighed. Look, what time do you finish? Six. Right, I'll see you out front. Someone came in and glanced at me before going into a cubicle. It wasn't uncommon for people to sit there making phone calls. However, I didn't want them to hear what I was saying. Yes, I've got to go now. I need to get back to my desk. Me too, although my desk is a training field. I'll see you later, babe. And Stella? Yes. Keep your chin up because I'm falling in love with you and I don't want to lose you. I stared at the phone, shocked. Bye, I mumbled. Did I hear that correctly? Did he just say he was falling in love with me? So that was a small excerpt from Play the Game by Karen J. Mossman. You can pop over to Amazon and pick up the book there. Thank you for listening. This is KK Narrations.